Computer vision started in the 1960s and computer vision systems keep getting better. So especially in the last 10 years, there's been massive progress in the field and the systems have become much more ready for tackling some of the applications we may want them to tackle. I'm Olga Rysakovsky. I'm an assistant professor of computer science here at Princeton. I work on computer vision. Computer vision is a part of artificial intelligence or AI. And AI has many different definitions, but one way to think about it is it's building smart machines. And so computer vision is a study of building smart machines that are able to reason effectively about the visual world. Computer vision can be used for any number of applications. So you can imagine a robot that's assisting the elderly. You have a robot that's, uh, for example, helping do disaster relief. So being able to go into areas that are too dangerous for humans. You can imagine a robot that's uh, delivering supplies or delivering medication. All of these uh, robotic applications require computer vision. So we're on the road to uh, amazing uh, breakthroughs, amazing applications of computer vision. But we're starting to realize that there is um, there's an issue that we really need to think very carefully about. And this is of the issue of biasing these systems. So for example, face recognition technology just works much better on people with lighter skin. And there is the very complicated question about why that is, but at least part of the answer is the fact that large scale modern data sets, despite being large scale, actually are missing certain groups of people and that is dangerous. For example, you could imagine if a computer vision system is trained to recognize pedestrians um, and you will deploy this in an autonomous car. If people with darker skin are underrepresented in computer vision data sets, computer vision systems just don't work as well for them. And when these systems are being deployed to make life or death decisions like in autonomous driving uh, scenario, that leads to very tragic errors. And I said, oh my God, this is this is the topic we need to work on. So we did that with Revise, which is a tool that my colleagues and I uh, built and published this year uh, that analyzes a computer vision data set and tries to identify patterns in the data that may be problematic. And then it poses a set of questions to humans asking, okay, I've identified this pattern in the data set, is that okay? And uh, proposes some potential suggestions for how to mitigate these patterns if the user decides that they're undesirable. So now we ask the question of who are these people? And right now we know that the group of people making these decisions is very homogeneous. 10 to 15% of uh, AI researchers identify as female, only 10 to 15%. We know that out of um, tenure track engineering faculty in the US, less than uh, 4% are um, African-American, less than 4% are Hispanic. And this matters because that means that this technology, which is going to affect all of us, is currently being built and deployed by people who don't necessarily represent all of us. So a few years ago, um, my PhD advisor, Fei-Fei Li, uh, my longtime friend and mentor, Rick Summer, and I started the AI for All Foundation, focused on identifying, educating, mentoring, and supporting the next generation of AI leaders. So we um, go out and strive to find uh, people from uh, groups who are traditionally underrepresented within AI, who are high school students or uh, sometimes even middle school students, and get them excited and engaged in this field. AI for all is my passion. It is something that I care very deeply about, and we won't stop our work until the field is actually representative, until we actually have a diversity of voices in the room building these AI systems. I'm Olga Rosakowski, and I'm a forward thinker.